it's easy to get confused when it comes to understanding how you actually see mark an electronic product in practice directives regulations harmonized standards a lot of abstract concepts and in this video i will do my very best to break down the scene marking process for electronics and how it's carried out in in real life in in practice and i'm going to use the compliance gate platform as the uh, as the canvas so let's say that i am i intend to sell this bluetooth speaker in the eu the first thing i need to do is to map out the regulations and directives that apply because this in turn informs me of the requirements that I must follow in order to see mark the product. Right. Well, we can determine that this is an electronic product. It also likely contains a battery. I think that's it. I think we can we can move forward. So what I'm demonstrating with this is that there can be more than let's say one module that applies. These are both relevant because both contain CE marking requirements. I'll explain what that means in a bit. The product category alone doesn't inform us of the requirements. We need to go deeper. We need to look at the specific parameters that in turn trigger certain requirements. The input voltage range. Now, I don't think you would have this input voltage straight into the Bluetooth speaker, but it likely comes with a charger, an AC adapter. And that part, that component, will be covered by the low voltage directive. So my answer is yes. Does it have ra does it come with is it radio enabled? That's the question. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, LTE, 5G, G uh, or GPS, for example. Then we need to comply with the radio equipment directive. The answer yes, because this is a Bluetooth speaker. Does the Echo Design directive cover the product? Well, then we have to go here. We have to take a look at the different categories that that are are, are covered. And I don't find anything, I don't think there's anything for sound equipment here. But yeah, you could argue that it comes with a power supply, so at least the power supply would be covered. Like this one, actually. The same thing goes for the energy labeling framework regulation. It's actually based on the same list. All products covered by both of these. And as established, do mention external power supplies. Let's just imagine that our uh, Bluetooth speaker comes with a power supply, so then I'm going to switch from no to yes. Does it contain a lithium battery? Yes, it does. None of these are relevant. So the system is now creating a requirements list. And this is where we can really dive into the Requirements that we must fulfill in order to CE mark the product. CE marking is a compliance mark. Um, and yeah, this is what CE mark, a CE mark looks like. But a CE mark is a compliance mark that demonstrates that I have followed all the requirements under all the regulations and directives that do require the CE mark. That's also what can be a bit confusing. Now, the situation is that the EMC directive, the ROHS directive, the low voltage directive, the radio equipment directive, the echo design directive, the energy labeling framework regulation, and the batteries regulation. How many is that? Five plus two, seven regulations and directives, all of which require C marking. So in order to affix C marking, at least in this case, means that I need to comply with all of these. Now, compliance in practice means that you need to ensure that the product is compliant with certain standards, documentation, and labeling requirements that also go beyond the CMARC itself. I would take them a few hours to actually explain the details here. But what I can do is that I explain one of these. I will explain the procedure for one of these regulations and directives. And then you understand the basics. Then you understand essentially what needs to be done for each of these. Which one should I pick? Well, I will go LVD because I've got some sample documentation that I can show you. 
Right. So let's say we, that we begin with the low voltage directive. What is, what's the first thing? Well, I need to determine which conformity assessment procedure to follow. And essentially, a conformity assessment procedure tells me if I need to work with a notified body or not, or can I self-manage this procedure. In many cases, you can. When it comes to electronics, in most directives and regulations can follow you, you can apply uh, module a meaning that you take care of this internally that still usually requires the involvement of a testing company but documentation and so on is not really reviewed by any third party in these situations anyway now that's established i need to comply with harmonized standards this can be tricky a harmonized standard is essentially a standard that uh, how should i express this um, they call it presumption of conformity. In short, if I comply with the standard in question, then I have complied with the low voltage directive as a whole. Now the LVD, it covers electrical safety. It says broad requirements for electrical safety. The, what electrical safety can mean different things depending on the product. Okay? So my job now is to go through this and identify the one or more standards that apply to my product it can be challenging but in some cases it's, it's quite straightforward now let's see what we can find for power supplies okay um, we got something here low voltage power supplies DC output that sounds about right part 7 safety requirements low voltage switch mode power supply Why they have specifically uh, required compliance with part seven, I don't know, but that was written anyway. Now, let's imagine that this is a standard that applies. What do I need to do? Well, I would need to access this standard and it, 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 it can be ac accessed on through resellers that you can find listed on the Senelec website. I need to make sure that my product is designed to comply. And that's really the challenging part when it comes to CE marking. C marking in this case essentially communicates that my product is compliant with the applicable harmonized standards. Okay, but the C mark doesn't magically make a product safe. I think we all understand that. Instead, was actually making my product safe to use, meaning that I'm distributing a power supply that doesn't explode. That's this standard. This standard contains technical drawings and other parameters that guide me in terms of design and component selection to ensure that my power supply is safe. That's the first thing I need to do. That's always really the first process. And you may need to do this at a very early stage when the product is on the drawing board, because as you can likely imagine, you need to make sure that, you need to make sure that, let's say these principles actually go into the product specification technical documentation and so on. So that's step number one. Then we can go ahead to the uh, declaration of conformity. The declaration of conformity is essentially a, well, it's a document, it's a statement in a way. It's a statement where I, as the manufacturer, which is also not necessarily the factory, but you know the brand owner would also be defined as a manufacturer. But basically the declaration of conformity is a statement. We state the product model type batch serial number that's number one we declare the manufacturer that's a company name that's an address we state that the declaration is issued under the sole responsibility of the manufacturer well that's just a statement we upload an image this for traceability it must be utterly clear which doc belongs to which product because a declaration of conformity is essentially for one product maybe not for one color but this specific lineup of like this this product sorry sorry port, portable speaker x2 2025 edition this is something I've just made up but just to give you an understanding i need to list all the directives and regulations that apply now that as you know can be more than one i think i counted up to seven in this in this video okay so that's what you have to list here and I listed the EMC and also RHS. I would need to actually expand on this. I also need to input the harmonized standard. Okay, so now I've already added a few and 
I'm not really sure if they correspond exactly to, to well, the power supply in this case, but just for reference, what would that actually be? I would, I would need to make sure I'm, I'm entering this data. I need to add the data right in, right here. So in, in a way, the declaration of conformity is it's a summary. I need to see, yeah, select a version. For some reason, they stated two versions. I'm just going to go with this one. Anyway, that's what they mean by harmonized standards. You need to declare the harmonized standards. You need to sign it. Well, you need to input a name and position, place and date of issue, and then a signature. So you actually have to you have to download this document, which you can do here as a PDF, and, and then you print and sign. You just stored it for ten years. Okay. Right. So, uh, what have we achieved so far? Well, we know we, we mapped out the different regulations and directives. We identified the harmonized standard uh, uh, for the, under the LVD. We have now created our declaration of conformity. Beyond that, we also need to create something called technical documentation. For that, I will actually need to go into Eurolex. Right. Um, just a recommendation: always look for the latest version. Uh, on the left, okay. And the latest version is not available in English for some reason. Maybe they did a correction in one European language. So anyway, we'll stick to the legal act, and we're gonna go look for Annex Six. All right, here's Annex Six. Why do I bring this up? Because it says here under documentation. Well, we got the DOC sorted, but we need technical documentation. And that's on annex, annex 3. So technical documentation is essentially required for all CMR products and you need a general description of the product, you need design drawings, um, descriptions and explanations necessary for the understanding of those drawings, and yeah, that must be clear, a list of harmonized standards, but that should already be clear because that should al already be in our declaration of conformity by now. Um, result of design, calculations made, examinations carried out, etc. Well, that could basically be a description of how did you, what adjustments did you make to your specification uh, after you uh, examined the harmonized standard. And test reports. Now, test reports refer to product test reports that, that verify, that verify the, um, if the product is compliant with the harmonized standard. Okay. When it comes to LVD, you also need to provide, when necessary, instructions and safety information. That could be the effect, um, input voltage, etc., usage instruction, user instructions, and so on. Installation. That's a bit more vague because when it comes to the DOC and technical documentation, you have this like definitive list of items to include. Quite straightforward. When it comes to user instructions, there are certain standards you can follow, but it's not like they have an ex the exact wording for every every possible electronic product. Right, then we have labeling requirements. So this video is about C marking of electronics. So yes, obviously you need a C mark. That's, that's number one. Traceability information. This is referring to uh, information about the product and, and basically the manufacturer. Could also be the importer. But I'm assuming that you're a brand, uh, you're a brand or an actual factory. Keep in mind, uh, being a manufacturer doesn't mean that you operate a production facility. It means that you have product manufactured with your design or with your brand. So what can traceability be? I created a label already. Take a look at that. This one is, I think, is based on the LVD. But product information, batch number, portable speaker, AB. That that's a company name actually. Um, address and contact details, electronic contact details. Okay, so this this is what traceability means. And well, we can see the product name, we can see the manufacturer, contact point, address, batch number. This enables us to to trace a specific product to a certain production run in case of a recall. So this is not just a model number SKU, which would be static. For my product model, uh, it's it's something we update each time we place an order with our manufacturer. Okay, right. So 
labeling point one and point two done. Point three, um, this is specifically for the LVD, but you need to mark it with the essential characteristics. And well, what could that be? Potentially input, output, voltage, um, and so on. You can find more details in Annex in Annex one here. But it's very product specific, so I'm not really going into detail. And finally, lab testing. Lab testing according to the harmonized standards that we have identified. And then you obtain a test report, which you put back with the technical documentation. So just to reiterate, step one is, is always to map out the different regulations and directives that apply. Step two, identify the harmonized standards that could apply. It could be more than one. Create documentation as a DOC user instructions, technical documentation, and you create labeling files, the C mark traceability, and in some cases, other information. Now, if we look at a completely different, different directive or regulation, we can take the, the batteries regulation, well, it covers batteries, and in short, you have the declaration of conformity requirement. You need technical documentation. You need user instructions. You need test reports. But in some cases, well, in in most cases, the, there can be there are differences. So this means that you may need to issue more than one declaration of conformity. The technical documentation can differ. So I think for batteries, it can be a bit more extensive. So whereas you wouldn't necessarily need to have, let's say one declaration of conformity or uh, one technical documentation set for each of these you still need to take all of them into consideration because they are not like strictly copy pasted there are differences in terms of the labeling in terms of the documentation what exactly must be part of the documentation so you need to do what i just did with the lvd and go through these one by one look up the harmonized standards Look up what you need to have in a declaration of conformity. Look at the exact label items that you need. And, and then you combine this. Just like you don't need seven C marks, you, you ap apply one C mark to the product, the packaging, and accompanying documentation, because the signals comply with all of them. But you still need to factor in that they do differ in terms of the procedure, the documentation, the labeling requirements. They, they do resemble one another, so I think once you understand, say, the LVD, I think the framework is, is, is going to become pretty clear. You can then repeat this procedure for all of these. All right, so that's everything I have to say about uh, C marking. If you're interested about learning more, you can go to compliancegate.com and you can also book a free consultation right here on our website.